So we took our rooftop tent off the top of the car to do some maintenance up there. Um, and while it was just sitting here, some incompetent animal has released excrement onto our tent. <laughs> it was a turkey. <laughs> it was a turkey, yeah. Also, the last time we went out on a little day trip, we probably took out, oh, at least a million gnats with the front of the sequoia. So we have many things to wash. Alrighty, top five overlanding vehicles for about $5,000. Um, this is kind of a new uh, series that I intend to uh, undertake in the next couple of weeks. I think I might uh, make some other vehicle recommendations at some other different uh, price points. Uh, so, but this, this time we're going to be talking about five vehicles for about 5k, and I should probably talk uh, about some of the specifics of how uh, I chose this list. Basically, I picked out five vehicles that I thought were pretty well suited for overlanding in the United States. So things such as reliability, uh, you know, storage, cargo space, um, availability, uh, and of course the price. All these things kind of came into play. And I should also mention that um, this is really just kind of the this is really just based on the thought process that I have about certain vehicles. Um, not all of these vehicles I've had personal experience with. Some I have. Um, of course, I, I have worked at a tire shop for a couple years, so so I, I've been able to form some opinions based on some of that experience. But I have not owned and taken all of these vehicles overlanding, so it's hard for me to say that this is a definitive guide. And I'll also add to that. Um, if you watch this video and you're outraged and you're angered that, you know, whatever vehicle that you like didn't get mentioned, well, there's probably some significant merit to your choice of that vehicle too, so comment below because I'm sure we'd all love to know about it and uh, why you think it's a good choice. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get into it. I should probably mention that this list isn't in any particular order. Um, it's, you know, based on what I think is the best. These are just five vehicles in whatever order you want to put them in. Um, so anyway, the, the first one I'm going to start with is, is pretty obvious, and you might think I'm, I'm biased or whatever, but um, the first vehicle on my list is uh, the first-gen Toyota Sequoia. Um, of course, it's the vehicle that we've owned for the last uh, six or seven months, and we've put over 15,000 miles on it since we bought it, so we've put a lot of miles on it in uh, a short amount of time. Um, but since it's a vehicle I own, and some people might think I'm biased for choosing it, I'm also going to uh, say that this this is, I'm recommending the first gen Sequoia slash the fourth gen Toyota 4Runner. Um, and I, I've, I've been able to find uh, a fair number of examples of these listed online for around $5,000. Um, I will say that the 4Runners um, specifically are a little more challenging to find at that price point. Uh, but they, they, these vehicles really have a lot going for them, starting with the 4.7 liter V8. Um, of course, I know the 4Runners also had a 4-liter uh, V6 as an option, too, which is also a great engine. I find that those are actually a little more challenging to find um, at the price point we're talking about today. Um, but we, we cross-shopped both of these vehicles for a long time. Great engine, uh, great transmission. Um, no, no vehicle is bulletproof, but um, these both of these vehicles are probably about as close to bulletproof as any... Um, any SUV in the United States, sold in the U United States, you know, that you can possibly get other than maybe a Land Cruiser. These, these are definitely the, the most reliable SUVs of their, of their age. Um, and they're great. Um, very capable off-road. Uh, the Forerunner has a really, really good aftermarket support. Uh, the Sequoia has a decent support. Um, and that support is actually growing. There's a lot of a lot of companies are starting to do more stuff for the Sequoia, which is which is really cool to see. So anyway, that's that's my number one pick. Um, if you know anything about me, you know that I I do love Toyotas, um, but unfortunately, these are the only Toyotas that I'm going to be able to recommend simply because any any other Toyotas um, that you'd probably think like the Tacoma or maybe uh, later. Um, Generation uh, Four Runners, Tundras, Land Cruisers—they're unfortunately all just kind of too expensive. Um, for some reason, the ones I mentioned are really the only ones that you can get for about 5k. Um, 
or they're also just really not clean examples. Obviously, you can find those, but you know, I'm only going to recommend vehicles that you can find good examples of. So anyway, my next pick is actually going to be um, an American product. It's going to be the 10th generation F-150. Um, so this uh, really stands out to me. I, I have a friend named Robbie who also has a YouTube channel. His channel will be linked in the description. He owns, uh, I think it's a 2003, but it's a short bed and it's a single cab F-150 with a 4.6 liter V8. Um, it's it's a really, really great truck, if you ask me. I, I really like this truck because um, it's got great approach, departure, and breakover angles if you get this short, short bed variant. Um, the 4.6 liter Triton V8 made by Ford is probably one of the best uh, V8s that Ford's ever made. It's really, really reliable. You can also get these trucks with the manual transmission, uh, which is really cool. I, I, I'm always, uh, I always like seeing trucks that trucks or SUVs that you can still get with a manual transmission, because I know some people really like that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's Some people prefer it for going off-road. Um, and also, the, there's the reliability factor of it. It's kind of hard to go wrong uh, with a manual transmission. They'll pretty much you know last as long as you're willing to put clutches in them. Um, so anyway, I, I really like these trucks. Um, I think if you're, if you're looking for a, a good, simple truck that you can, you can find readily available anywhere, um, good, you know, good power, um, ability to, to modify it is definitely there. Um, I think it'd be really fun to put uh, like a bed rack over one and have a rooftop tent on it. I, I, think, I think they'd make a, a great platform for, for an inexpensive overland build. So anyway, that's, that's, my, that's my second pick. All right, and now my third pick is actually another American product. It's going to be the uh, ninth generation Chevy Suburban. Um, the Chevy Suburban is actually the longest running, uh, you know, automotive name uh, in the United States right now. I guess longest continually uh, used nameplate. Um, and uh, I specifically am going to recommend the ninth generation, which is the year 2000 to 2006. Uh, specifically with the 5.3 liter V8. Uh, this is a really good uh, big option. Um, these, are, this is pretty much gonna be the biggest SUV you can get at this price point. Interestingly enough, I really wanted to include the Ford Excursion in this, uh, in this list, but I, unfortunately I just couldn't find any examples of it for around $5,000. Pretty much all of them were uh, above that price point. So if I make a video of vehicles under or around 10k the excursion will likely be on there but but for now at this price point the suburban's about the best you can get uh, really really good size I've seen uh, there's actually a company called sub overland that's making uh, basically like camper van conversions out of uh, suburbans they're, they're so big they're able to build some shelves and stuff out of them and it's it's they're really cool aside from that um, I'd recommend if you can get them um, Find one that has a G80 in the rear differential. Um, that's uh, Chevy's or GM's uh, automatic locking differential. It's not an LSD, it is a true locking diff. Um, you do have to spin it to get it to, to engage. Um, but overall, it's, I mean, I, I, you know, I would definitely prefer to have that over just having an open diff. Um, you know, aftermarket support for a Suburban of that age isn't gonna be perfect. Um, but if you're just looking for a lot of space, maybe if you if you have a large family or something like that, I think this is going to be a good option. Reliability-wise, I've heard a lot of good things about the 5.3 liter Vortec. Um, I had a similar uh, Vortec engine in my in my Blazer, and it was very reliable. I've known a lot of people that own Tahoes and Suburbans of this age, and they've all all said pretty good things about them. I think maybe the only issue you might run into, um, significant issue, might be a transmission. Um, but seeing as how popular and how widespread these these vehicles are, I feel like you, if you if you had to finding a salvage transmission for one probably wouldn't be that expensive. Um, so anyway, and and I also found tons of those for for uh, 5k or less, and a lot of them were in in really good shape. All right, I felt like it was necessary for uh, my fourth pick to to mention a um, another pickup truck. This this time specifically a midsize. I really do wish I could recommend a Tacoma. If you can find a Tacoma that's less than 20 years old, doesn't have you know 300,000 miles on it, 
has four wheel drive in good shape. If you can find one of those for 5K or less, you better go buy it immediately because um, an opportunity like that is nearly impossible to find. For some reason, the resale value on those things are ridiculous. Um, so anyway, the, the next best thing I think I can recommend at that price point is going to be the Nissan Frontier. Um, these are kind of uh, a mixed bag in terms of people's opinions of them. Uh, I've heard a lot of terrible things about their uh, transmission. Um, overall, I think the the engine options that came in those were were pretty good. Um, but I've 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 just heard a lot of reports about uh, coolant getting into your transmission um, and that destroying it. Uh, but other than that, they're pretty simple trucks. They're probably very easy to work on. Um, and the, the the thing that I like about them is that yeah, they can be had for a decent price. Um, but really and truly, the aftermarket support for those is actually really good. Um, I don't know why it is. Maybe, I think maybe it's because those are offered overseas. But yeah, they, they seem like they're pretty honest, simple little trucks. You can get those with a manual transmission too. That's probably, I, I probably wouldn't get anything but the manual transmission for those, seeing as how, uh, how many issues I've heard about with, with the automatics and those things. It's really hard to go wrong with these trucks just simply because of the price point that you can get them at. For a mid-sized truck, uh, that's it's pretty much the best you can do. Um, I I probably wouldn't go for um, I, I wouldn't go for an old Colorado or something like that. I think those are going to be plagued with with issues. Some of those I think had a five-cylinder, so I'd stay clear of anything like like that. Um, maybe the the only other truck at that in that size that might be a good option would be a Ranger, but um, those um, seem to be hard to find. Uh, they're hard to find clean examples of those. So anyway, mid-sized truck, I'm going to recommend the Frontier. All right, and then my, my last pick, and I, I picked this one really because uh, I think value for money, this is definitely one of the best options on the list. That's uh, actually going to be a Jeep Grand Cherokee, specifically from the time period of 1999 to 2004. Um, my, my friend Nolan, he's got a YouTube channel. I'll link his, his channel in the description. He owned one of these for a couple years. Um, and it was it was a, a great SUV, um, very very capable. It had really good approach, departure, breakover angles, good aftermarket support. It's a Jeep. Even even the Grand Cherokees get you know good support aftermarket wise. Um, I'm gonna recommend if you do pick up one of these, definitely look for one that has the four liter uh, V6. And if you know your Jeeps, you're gonna look at me and say, oh, if you're recommending the Grand Cherokee with that engine, why wouldn't you recommend the the the, the normal Cherokee, because um, that's that same uh, straight six um, was offered in the Cherokee as well. The uh, the Cherokee is also a great a great option too. Those unfortunately they're just hard to find clean examples too. Those are kind of like uh, third gen forerunners. Uh, those are a great option, and yeah, you can definitely probably find one for about five k or less. Um, but finding one that's clean at that price is going to be is going to be kind of a challenge. So I'm I, f I found a decent number of Grand Cherokees at that price point with that engine. Um, Reliability wise, um, they're definitely not going to be anywhere near as as good as a Toyota. Probably not as good as you know uh, like that F one fifty I mentioned earlier. Um, you could run into a transmission problem with that. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but once again. I think picking up a salvage, you know, transmission unit for one of those probably wouldn't be too bad. These Grand Cherokees have really good storage space. They're also really comfortable. They they seem to uh, sell these at a, a higher price point than a lot of other comparable mid-sized SUVs at the time. Uh, my my friend Nolan's Grand Cherokee it was so much nicer than my my Blazer was in terms of you know the the interior and and stuff like that. It, it was a really smooth riding car. Uh, for its age. So anyway, that, that pretty much wraps it up for my list of top five overland vehicles for 5k or less. Um, there, like I mentioned earlier, there's plenty of other good options out there too. This is just the list that sticks out to me. I think if I, if I had 5k and I was going to start a vehicle build, I'd pick one of these. Um, of course, to do it again, I'd go back and buy another Sequoia because we, we have loved our Sequoia. Um, but anyway, I, I digress. Um, so anyway, uh, leave leave a comment below with your suggestions, of course. Uh, also, you know, if you want to suggest another topic for, for a video, um, leave that in the 
in the comments below as well. And stick around for more overlanding, I should say more specifically budget overlanding uh, content. We take our Sequoia out on trips all the time and we'd love for you to subscribe and join us for those. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.